Welcome to Basketball Network. My name is Harry, and today we'll be talking to Yusuf Nurkic, aka the Bosnian Beast. Nurk, welcome. Appreciate having me, Faust. Let's start off with the finals. What are your thoughts on the finals? Uh, the Lakers crowned as the champions for the 17th time in their history. Uh, did you expect it coming, uh, you know, coming about like, like that? Yeah, I mean, after we fell down and, um, and they passed us, I feel like they, they have a great chance to win it all. And um, I think the, the worst feeling, you, you, you know, they champion, of course, but you want to be one day there. But at the same time, somebody, you know, kick you out of the playoffs. I think that's the only right to do so that team can win the championship. So for me, it was like, yeah, Lakers are going to get it. Mm -hmm. You know, when you guys beat the, the Lakers uh, in the first game of, of the playoffs, I actually thought that they were in for a major upset. You know, a lot of NBA analysts uh, were unsure that they could pass, uh, pass you guys, especially with you coming back. What happened? What, what, was there an adjustment that the Lakers made? Can you just talk more about that? I mean, you know, people can talk about injuries all, all, all they want. But I feel like there's no excuse, um, especially in sports. You know, some stuff you can predict. Obviously, the whole season for for the Blazers are up and down as far as health, and we couldn't we couldn't you know put together I think even one game to be whole team, whole squad. So that was a major thing for us. Can we be healthy? Can we can we get together where we want? But at the same time, I feel like if we if again. Uh, have a whole squad with Rodney and me and Zach and and pretty much whole team to have a you know real shot. I think it will be a different story. But at the same time, you know, you can't just look at it that way because every team has to deal with something like that. So not maybe as much as we did, but um, at the same time, I think that's that's our story because you know you never know, especially before my injury when I went down. How will that finish with, you know, without me, they almost, you know, get there. So you will never know sometimes in life what's going to happen. And, and, you know, it's hard to predict, but I wish, and you know, hopefully the next season we can stay, you know, together as much as possible, especially during the playoffs and, and see what we can do. And I think you have a special group, but at the same time, sometimes in a sport, you need a little luck too. Exactly. Um... I think it's going to be a great season for you if you manage to stay healthy, if the basketball gods uh, stay on your side in a way, because, you know, in the, in the seeding games prior to the playoffs, you guys finished six and two. And I don't like talking yeah, about, goal, yeah. Yeah, I, I don't like talking about what ifs, but uh, if you guys were complete, a healthy team, uh, you would have, you probably would have a much better record in the regular season. No and, doubt. No doubt. Uh, Definitely. I think that's, the team I was playing with without Rodney and uh, later Zach, um, I think we are we are top five team in, in, in the West. I think the full squad, we definitely can compete for number one. And I'm saying that because I know how much talent that group has. And with Carmelo and, and, and you know, Dame, of course, and CJ, but um, Whiteside. So there's so much going on in. But we didn't have a reason to, so in, in a bubble. So it, it was just... You know, you have a one squad and you play with different squad. But still, I think we should, um, as team as we play for 72 games, I think we should still be, have a better record. Mm -hmm. You know, fortunately, it didn't happen. So our, our games was counted as the playoffs every game. You know, you, you know, look at just my position. I didn't play for 16 months. And I'm coming in, I know we need to win almost every, you know, every game. Um, it just so much pressure on, on under the wings, you know. People doubt, you know, he's gonna need a whole year to get back where he was, and and so much going into and 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 my resume and, and who I want to be, you know, as a player, as a person. And to me, it was like never doubt I want to come back better than I was before. But at the same time, you know, everybody wants to see what I can do for this team, and I think I show the that I'm kind of like a game changer for them. Um, but our team is just um, built as, as it is with Damon, CJ and everybody else around. But I think we have a, you know, kind of little maybe piece of way to be there where we should be or or piece of health. 
So we'll see what, what it is. But um, I, I definitely agree with you. Definitely. Definitely agree with you. Um, when talking about your first game, uh, when talking about your first game back, uh, you played against the Memphis and the bubble. It was the seeding games. And that was, like you said, 16 months uh, after recovering from your injury. What was that feeling like for you just being on the court again? I mean, uh, first of all, I think never, I'm trying to never take anything for granted. You know, it's been, it's been a journey for me, you know, personally, life and, and, um, and just basketball standpoint. But at the same time, just because it was a bubble environment, there is no fans, there, there is a um, protocol, everyday testing. And I think it was just difficult for, for understanding what's going on. So I couldn't approach a game as, as, as a fan's game. Because I think that takes a lot of emotions from, from, from myself, first of all. Then, you know, fans would make an environment for me. I could, probably couldn't handle emotions even even more. So I think for the bubble help, um, so I was approaching basically as a pickup game. And, and you know, it's count. So it's almost like a practice um, that really everybody kind of... <laughs> track the, the record with the score and everything. So I think the, like a preseason in the in the practice facilities, mm -hmm. like just to be inside and, and, you know, you compete at the highest level, but at the same time, there's no extra, extra like a fans or, or some type of edge you can get with the fans. And of course, everybody wants to play with the fans and, and, and that's never doubt. But at the same time, I feel like there was some piece of missing, but, but I think that helped me going going to the bubble and uh, the the break for me was disappearing. Like I didn't felt I miss anything. Mm -hmm. And when talking about fans and the entire Orlando bubble experience, something un unprecedented in basketball history. Do you think we're going to continue like that next year, or hopefully we're going to start think playing so. with fans? I don't think so. I I think. The, um, there is so many case scenario right now, but you know I'm not allowed to talk about all of them. But I can tell that we are looking for maybe the testing because vaccine. You never know what's going what's going to happen with that, and when it's really reality to get vaccine. You know, technically you need 10 to 20 years to get real vaccine for the for the what we what we're looking for here. But um, but I think what's realistic to get all the tests. You know, maybe you buy the tickets and you get a test, so you, you can test if you have negative. Mm -hmm. Test you can go in a game normally, and you have a positive. Of course, you're gonna go home, or or stay home. So I think that's that's pretty much if we can get as you know how many numbers of tests um, to have for each game and 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 each city or or the team. Mm -hmm. I think that's gonna be what we're looking for. But it's gonna be really hard to get. We don't even know um, when season gonna start. So. I think the later season start, the better chance we have to have fans, mm -hmm. realistically. If we, we talking about January, and I, I don't think that's realistic, um, then we probably gonna go with some type of bubbles, maybe one on east, one on, uh, one on west. But I think everybody goal as far as I'm hearing with the, with the MBPA as a player organizations and, uh, and team representing. So I think um, we're going to try to do the, the what we can to play with the fans. Mm -hmm. um, I, I just think we have to applaud the NBA on what they did and the environment that they created. I, I talked to Jose Calderon a couple of weeks ago. He's part of the MBPA and you know he just shared a lot of a, a lot about the measures that they put in. So just you know applaud to what they did. But I honestly hope we're gonna be playing in arenas with fans uh, <laughs> sitting next to each other and and the vaccine no, available to us. You... When you when we just arrived to the bubble in Orlando, it was like, what the fuck? <laughs> like, <laughs> basically, like it was so much to, so much into to get used to it. At, at the same time, you come in from the free world. You've been in the house. You've been you know we've been locked down for you know a couple of weeks. But at the same time, you was like you can get outside and you know sure, hopefully you can walk outside and and then no one bother you. But here you can't get out. Like basically. You're in a, in a resort, so you test in every day. There is a protocol with masks, and uh, you know all the questions like why are we getting mad, why are we taking masks if if we you know have a test every day and everybody's negative. But at the same time, they have a strictly protocols, and I think that shows 
Adam Silvers and 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 the crew was what they done with the MBPA as a, as a player organizations. Um, it was zero test positives. So that's amazing. Comparing man. to all the leagues, uh, what they're trying to do, I think the, the Adam Silver did a great job, and it's just amazed me that the, I don't know how many games we play yet, but uh, it was it was just hell of a season to finish the season with the pandemic. I think historically, mm -hmm. something that never happened before, and and we actually did it at the highest level mm -hmm. that you possibly can imagine. So I think the sacrifice was made, but I think. The end of the day, the goal is is as you look in the season is finished with a with a no you know no problems. Yeah. And I'm talking about real problems. No one die and no one get sick. And that was like my hope because you know there is some old coaches out there, man. Like when you look at it was a question: they're gonna come or they're gonna stay home. Mm -hmm. But when we show up there, I think that's that's the safest place on earth. When we was looking at that. Exactly. It was really the the opportunity for everybody to finish the season and for me to come back. And I think the NBA did a great part, as, as, except the part we need to come back and play yeah. eight games and then playing tournament. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it was not for Portland, to be honest with you, man. Like we play, we have to play eight games, and we if we get eight seed, we still play tournament. The play -in, playing yeah. tournament. Mm -hmm. So I'm like, if we're a nine seed, we try to get them for three games. I get it. Like, we need to win the game two times against Memphis. But we already beat them for the eighth spot. And now mm -hmm. we need to play against. Yeah, that was, was crazy. The extra game and, and all the things. Like, when you think, like, if you lose, you play one more game. And then if you win, then you play next day Lakers. So I was like, man, we just crazy. need to win this game. And we win it. But it was... It was crazy that the, the way they did it, everybody was in a, in a, in a, in a race. Mm -hmm. There was really, I hope, I mean, I hope it's interesting for a fan, but for the player standpoint, like you play every other day and it was, yeah. it was crazy. It was and crazy, but. Uh, everybody was in the race except the Phoenix Suns <laughs> who finished perfect. But there was, there was. Yeah, so but. When you look at that way, we lost, if we lost against Brooklyn, they will be in. Okay, and, yeah, and that's true. San Antonio, and San Antonio was in at some point. Like almost everybody was in. Everybody would have a chance to get in. Mm -hmm. That was the that was the craziest part. Like you've been there, you just lose one game, you out. Like for us, we was eight seed. If we lose, <laughs> we'd be like not nine, nine. We'd be ten seed. So <laughs> it, it was just ridiculous how they 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 actually put that together. But um, I get what they did. But at the same time, was really was really impressed. Um, the way they did everything, but um, it was just great to see basketball again. Uh, Yusuf, let, let's briefly just take a flashback uh, to your childhood. Uh, when, when doing my research, I, I read about you starting playing basketball at 14. Uh, you were born in Swat Village, five miles from Tuzla in Bosnia, and yeah, you started basketball at 14. Did you play football before? And what was the reason uh, about like it, that's actually pretty late to start playing basketball? Yeah, I mean, when you look at, I mean, it's a crazy journey. Like when you when you think what you can do, and and from 2009 to 2014, 15 season, I was in NBA, and I played, and I start practicing 2009, not playing. Like that was my first officially contract to play for Slovenian team, uh, Zlatan Glasko, and. You don't get it. I mean, I mean, I didn't get it anything about what's going on with that professional sport. And and when you look at the going to the practice morning, night, five times a day, six times a day, practicing school, and it was just so much going on. And that period of time, you'd be like, I don't know if I built for this. At the same time, like I'm I'm away from home. Like people don't get it. It's it's like seven, eight hours or seven hours from Tuzla driving to to Lashko. Um, it's like culture different. It's it's not like time change zone or something, but you definitely go into the different language, mm -hmm. <laughs> different people. Like you never left home before. So I think that was the, probably the, the most shocking part. Going back, why I started playing basketball? I really don't know, man. Like the guy <laughs> came show up, one day show up at my house and saying, you are the best kid in 94 in Bosnia. 
and I'm looking at that dude like, what? And you haven't touched so, the basketball before that. <laughs> no, no. But it was, I mean, crazy sport. Like, he was really thousand percent sure I'll be in NBA. He, he, he actually said how long, you know, what's my high going to be? What's, what's, you know, wow. everything is just when he was saying it didn't make any, I mean, I guess when I'm looking back, yes. But right now when I was putting myself in that shoes, I, you know, I still didn't get it how he put everything together. And at the same time, then my progress from 2009, 2014, he, you know, with the injury, it just like, how but then you look at like you did everything you can you sacrifice you work and at the same time god give you you know the the great pad to to walk but at the same time you know from the small village to the nba it just sounds you know even i think dreaming is just <laughs> some part of the of the little taste i think this is bigger than dreaming because i couldn't or i didn't imagine I, i'm going to be an nba player or starting center or the front one of the franchise in NBA. And it just so many things is going in my mind when I'm just talking about that. Like it's it's impossible for me back then and now everything is possible. Yeah. Like you can't do it. Like people were saying, yo, he's not talented or you know, you are from small country or or but there is a way, man. Like if you work hard and and, and if you really all about that you'll figure out the way you know hopefully the god give you you know <laughs> faith to go in that way but i think um, definitely you need to have some luck to get there but at the same time there is a way if i can do it from the from the village in bosnia and no one here from bosnia when i get there and mm -hmm. then when i'm talking about my village they'd be like <laughs> you came from there like yeah they be asking me if the war is still going on there before when I, when I just came to USA. But I think my journey is just as special as you can get. Like four or five years practicing in UNMBA, I think there's, I don't I never met or hear anybody like that. Mm -hmm. Like just That's as far a, as basketball standpoint. Such an incredible uh, journey and story. And, and it's even more incredible. I don't know if this is true, but I read that that guy that found you he uh, he heard about you in the newspapers because uh, your dad, who is also seven feet, I don't know if this is true, but apparently your dad beat up ten guys in a bar or something, and he read about fourteen. This. Yeah, yeah, it's <laughs> fourteen. True. It's true. Yeah. Wow. That's how it become, and and he read newspaper and he show up at a house and be like, but that's what I said before, like <laughs> you're the best kid in the bar in '94, and I'm like. Uh, maybe yeah <laughs> but definitely not at the same time but yeah that was the story and, and what how Amazing. he find out he's like it's really crazy but, mm. but uh, you know, when you were meant to be man exactly uh when you were 19 uh you played for uh Tidavita in croatia and that year you were the most productive player in the adriatic league uh in terms of uh like per minute bases and you played 16 minutes only but you posted crazy numbers like 13 and uh, 13 points and six rebounds i think two blocks uh why did you get why didn't you get more playing time was it conditioning was yeah, it the coach was your question that you know back then people would say conditioning but that was a lie i mean uh, when you look at i feel like just the problem was experience like when you getting the chance to play with the with the Yasmin Repesha, one of the best coaches in and in, in this region for sure. And um, when you have a you know one of the best teams in in, in this region again and they have uh, all the facilities and, and environment to get you where you want to go. But at the same time there is uh, always like egos around the you know organization coach and everything. So I think they have a plan for me at the same time. If I didn't go to the Zadar at, 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 at my first year in Sevita, I think I don't know if I will stand here and, and talking to you. That's how big impact was um, that loan, I guess, to go to the Zadar. To the Zadar to play like second half of the season. It was important for me as my uh, personal career. Um, then I come back to the Asmi Repesha and play, but I think he have a bigger role for me 
and I didn't mind. That's why I didn't mind play low minutes, but but really impact minutes. Because when he was, um, when I was talking to the Yasmin, he was like, you're going to play this much, but we're going to have all system around you. So mm -hmm. that was like, why not? I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's all you need at the end of the day to get better, you know. Especially, sure. I think they have, especially I think he was like thinking I'm gonna stay for a couple of years. So I he I think in his mind he's tried to process what is the best, I guess, <laughs> route for me. But I didn't see it as the same. But at the same time, if you're going in 16 minutes and you basically you becoming a point guard on a post or, or being uh, used as much as possible in that 16 minutes. I think every player in that position, my age will, will want that role. You know, mm -hmm. you, you getting really as much minute you play, it's a progressive minute. Like you're not staying out there and waiting for, you know, some type of action to happen. So you are, you are the action. So that's why I have probably the most success season in those minutes because he really built around me at the, at the period I was in the floor. At the same time, I feel like that experience was helping to get more, I guess, uh, experience in a, on the floor um, because of fouls reaching and I was young and, and, and excited to play. But um, condition, no, nah, man, that's, mm -hmm. that's some uh, newspaper thing, like to say just to kind of put the kid in bad position in that period of time. That's good to know. Um, Yusuf, you, you're a physical player, something not, uh, not seen too often in Europe, I guess. Uh, what was the biggest adjustment when you came to the league, if any, for you? Oh, it was so much adjustments. I feel like, uh, I would probably not say adjustments, but I think uh, experience-wise, it just it's a shock. Like, you have living, I mean, we're living in this part of, you know, world different. And you just one day land in New York. I mean, you just go outside, man. You, you'll be like, this is different than anything I've seen in my life before. And then when you kind of meeting people as much as they welcome you and they're really social people, like they, they're going to ask you every time they see you, how are you and stuff like that. But at the same time, it's culture different as much as you can think. And still is different. Like you, you know, I used to say people like when I play with our games and exactly it's like this, like, <laughs> be like, that's how I imagine you to say. And when you come up and you're in a high level and, and, and going to the best league in the world playing for the, for the team, um, you'd be like, it should not be that hard. Right. But at the same time, when the Denver Nugget drafted me, I was the fifth center on that team. So they have four people before me in the draft night. So when Tim Connolly, president uh, of the Denver Nuggets, asked me like, what I'm thinking about getting to going to the Nuggets, I'm like, why? Why the hell are you one of me? Because you have like four people in front of me right now. <laughs> but in in, in America, and in, in how much different they thinking? They always thinking in the future. Like they always think of what could happen in ten, five three years. So for me, I didn't get it. Like why would this draft kid who wants to play and, and, and can play to wait a possibly a year or two to get a chance. But they really believe in their program. I think it showed, it show a lot. Of, um, I mean, I don't know the numbers, but I think it show a lot of positives when you draft the kid at a young age from the high school or one year college or from overseas that uh, they really know what's going on. They really know the program for them. And, and even if they're not playing, I think that's the best thing they can do. And I always said, like, if you have a chance to go in the NBA, there's no second chance. Like, you never know what's going to happen. You, you can get injured. Like, another another year, 60 players getting drafted. Like, in especially in, in, in the, you know, our region and, and the Balkan or ex-Yugoslavia, they'd be like, or you're going too early in the NBA, or you're going this. There is never too early. Like, it's impossible. Like, to go in, like, Drazen Petrovic and, and, and all the guys before us make a path for us. 
Like they were sacrificed in their time. Imagine, like I always said, like imagine you scoring 50, 50 points per game and you coming to the Portland and sitting on the bench because Drexler is in front of you. And that's, you know, probably anywhere happening in, in the, you know, after Kobe or, or MJ or LeBron, like that's how it is. Like yeah. if you play that position, you have no chance. But at the same time, they, you know, they pay for us so we can show up and, and have a chance to play. But for me, it was like experience and adjustments as far as you playing today in Denver or Portland. And next day you play in Miami and next day in Minnesota. And, and you're talking about it's warm and it's freezing. And then you're coming to Portland, it's raining. And you're coming like it's so much going into just the, the playing the game. And, and you playing every other game or every every almost every game every every night. So, and time zone change and a lot of traveling everything and preparing for every game because it's 82 games and mm -hmm. before playoffs and and before mm -hmm. preseason and it just it's a business but it's really like crazy world inside how fast going on and then and. You really need to take care of yourself and your body to be able to do that. And, and it took me a, two years to figure out what's going on. And, and because here you na you don't have a chance to see what's going on. Because uh, you know, a couple nights ago I was talking to my friends and they like, what is the biggest I guess difference between NBA and, and overseas? And I said, in our plane, like we going to the one away game. We have a hungry fifty people at in a plane wow. for one away game. And here, when you go on game, we have a bus for like 30 <laughs> people in. <laughs> like, it's, it's so much different at the same time. So I think that's, that's probably the, the biggest, I guess, sacrifice of changing. Mm -hmm. But um, at the same time, the people there is just like, this is the, this is the program and you know, we believe you're gonna follow that program. Mm -hmm. And here, it's more like day by day with how they feel, you know, yeah, they, yeah, yeah. of course they have and, a vision, but I don't think they have necessarily that much program in, in a place for each person. And the facilities are not even comparable. I mean, I, I played college ball and I would say that our facilities of that college, you know, are, are better than most European clubs facility, <laughs> facilities. For sure, for sure, for sure. You touched upon uh, the legends that paved, uh, that paved the way for you guys, Petrovic and Sabonis. I guess you know this uh, uh, better than a lot of people, Sabonis. Imagine if he came to the league during his peak. You know, he came with two broken knees at 28 or 29, but uh, like you said... I would not say broken knees, but uh, at the same time injuries. But uh, I mean... He's still like one of the best centers of all time. Like for me personally, he might be really top top because what he was doing in Lithuania before he came in NBA or for the country when he was playing for national team, I like man, that thing was nasty. Like yeah. the the way he was passing and, and uh, the way he he was just playing basketball and at that period, like in that era, like he easily could be one of the best big man, if not the best right now in this era, like mm -hmm. he could do anything. You maybe mm -hmm. it was probably the small ball, whatever, but he still like tall us. motherfucker who can, who can play, like who can hoop. Mm -hmm. So I think that's, that was like, for me, when I watching those people, Vlad the Divas and, and, and everybody just before was playing Peja and, and, and Tony Kukoc and everybody like, it just how they did it before us, it's special. But I think right now it's even more special because you have a chance and, and it's a different era. Like right now, bigs need to do everything. Mm -hmm. Like before, I don't know if they have to do everything. No, it's just not about shooting. It's about driving the ball. Like you need to be able to pass, set screens, um, read the game more and even more. So I think shooting, like you said, but and, and you you need to be able to do that nine out nine in like nine in nine out. So it's it's important to understand like before when you are tall you the big like you a center no matter what you can do like you a center. And today in in basketball like they look at you like what you can do else like 
Can you dribble the ball? Can you bring it on? You know, look at KD. Like, if KD was born in Bosnia or anywhere around here, he'd be unsuccessfully big who never have a weight to put on, on himself to play the five or four. Like, that's how they will do it here. That's, they'd be like, he's too weak and then, but then he's the greatest player right now in the league. Mm-hmm. You know, him and LeBron James, you can argue that who, who better or not, but at the same time, He's one of the coolest dude. Like to play, to how he play, it's just unbelievable. Like you, you, you know, sometimes you feel, sometimes you just feel you need to pray to, so he can miss. <laughs> you know, it's crazy. I mean, we was guarding that dude. Like we prepared for the game. I think he was playing home against Golden State, and he got hot. But at the same time, like I was looking at some point in the game. I mean, he had one stretch, bad stretch, like mm-hmm. second quarter. And I'm looking that dude has a 35. <laughs> and I'm like, he, he have a 35, and we think he have a bad game. Yeah. And that's how I feel about Dame, man. Like, especially now, like, he be shooting that from half court. And I'm like, so I need to set screens and in, in my half, almost like as soon as he get a, <laughs> as soon as he get a ball, I need to set screen on that dude. So he be Big aggressive. game day, so, yeah. So that's what I'm saying. Like, do you so have ta- so much talent in NBA? And here, I think it's a more team sport. Like, coaches, mm-hmm. especially old school coaches, they're not allowed you as much mm-hmm. as in NBA, how much freedom you get. Like, oh, oh, I get it at some point, but sometimes when you see people hot, like, they get in buckets, they be like, you're going out. you yeah. would be in a bench, yeah. like, sit down with me for a couple minutes, then catch your rhythm and stuff. But that's, that's how amazing me in the NBA when they see something they really give or give to the real shot so they can see what you have, you know, what else you can do. Mm-hmm. And it's never like for them satisfying. You always can get better. That's why like, look at LeBron James for 17 years now, man. He's still going. Like it's crazy it's longevity. Like yeah. Like, yeah. That's, crazy longevity. That's for me, like how actually you can expand your career. To mm-hmm. play longer and longer so mm-hmm. i think that's before impossible when you mm-hmm. t- you know 10 years ago when you see somebody 30 you'd be like he's you're done he you're done anymore. yeah mm-hmm. so now he's like 40 and he still might be able to play mm-hmm. it's like 10 year extra playing basketball he said he's gonna wait for his son to come into the league and then he's gonna quit <laughs> that's crazy I mean, it's possible right yeah yeah, man, I, I really love your energy when you play, uh, just the physicality and everything, uh, and the trash talk as well. Can you talk to me about trash talk? Is it something that uh, NBA players are not used to f- getting from Europeans, maybe? Um, uh, I, I definitely think there's, um, there's sometimes, like, misunderstanding. Like, I never start that thing. Like, usually people come to me and saying something, and... <laughs> Like I said, I never back down because there's there's something you need to prove or you better than person who you're talking to. And when you look at like I start think with the Russ. I didn't start things with the Russ. Russ mm-hmm. is mad in everybody. Like Russ is a great dude on the floor, but on the floor he's such a competitive competitive guy, you'd be like, he crazy. Like he'd be like but on the court, you really, you're not even thinking about that. Like, you're just going with the flow. If somebody won that, and, and, and you're going with the flow. But off the floor, I never have a problem with anybody. Like, there is a line. You mm-hmm. don't want to cross the line, no matter who you are, or what's your name, or color, or religion. It doesn't really matter. Like, I feel like that's what changed in the league over the over the years. Before, I think, with, I remember my first year with the, with the Kevin Garnett. That I mean, we talking mm-hmm. about that's that, I mean that talk is crazy. Yeah. Like that's Kobe and him. Like my experience was like Kobe, you know, saying stuff in my language, and and, and KG was saying some crazy stuff. Like I'm like, wow, man, really? What's really happening? Like it? What would they say? It's not for camera, but it's just like crazy stuff you can imagine. But they'd be really meaning like. And I don't know if they mean off the floor, but on the floor, on the court, like they be trying to cut your head and stuff. But that's how I think NBA changed too, because at the same time, 
it's a competitor, but they want to put the line there. You know, you can go back and see how much fight was before. And now you can barely see something because it's so much cost, player and organization, and fans. And so I think that's that's a good thing. But I think still fans try to see more competitors far on the floor. But I think that's getting like young guys coming in and they think they're better than they are at some point mm-hmm. and, and, and that point of their career. Mm-hmm. But I think that's good for the basketball and, and, and organization turning to the young players even more and more. Um, so I think that's a good thing. Mm-hmm. Um, you played with uh, with the Joker in Denver. Uh, gotta love his personality as well, and just the IQ uh, of basketball that he possesses. He had a great run this year. Um, you know, he's a pretty funny guy. Um, can you can you share something uh, from those years? Something that happened maybe that we don't know? No, I mean Joker is pretty low key on, on the floor. <laughs> he's more funny <laughs> off the floor. Like he, he not even really talk about in 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 the court on the court. He'd be like just focus on basketball and and try to play. But uh, on the floor, he'd be hilarious. Like in a bubble, we we've been hanging out all the time with the pretty much whole Balkan group. Was <laughs> I saw that <laughs> picture? That was together. that was crazy. Yeah. And uh, and uh, Joker was and <laughs> Nikola was joking with the Chancho. We we call him Chucky, <laughs> like almost like a Chuck Norris. Dude. But it was a funny thing, like because he always come at him, and and because they play together now. But mm-hmm. for me, it was like I always joke with him because the Chanchar is from Slovenia. But yeah, it was it was a great time in a bubble because at the same time we have a uh, people we know. Uh, usually it was was not the environment for everybody. Like you going to better game and going leaving and going home, going somewhere else. And now you play the game and, and go back to hotel, you see the same people. All the time. So that's yeah. I think that's I think NBA was worried about it. Like what what if something happened and they're going back to the same hotel? <laughs> so <laughs> it you know, that's I think the NBA really trying to set up the, the line what is the what is the normal and what is you know not not really in a good way. But it was for me, it was never, never a problem with Nicola about anything. So, mm-hmm. to me, it was I was grateful to have a chance to play basketball in Portland. So, I have a really good shot with the name and just better place, better fit for me. Mm-hmm. And when talking about Portland, you exploded uh, with the Trailblazers. It seems like a really good fit, like you said, mm-hmm. and the team and the city as well. Uh, can you just talk more about that? So yeah, I mean, I think um, when I, with my agent uh, who passed away, Dan Fagan, when we was looking at the teams, where we want to go, um, it was a, it was a Portland number one, it was a Boston number two, and um, number three, I think Toronto, or something like that. We give, we give um, Tim Conley our wish list, and usually not happened that way. I usually not happen where you want to go to end up there. But um, I think personally, when we talk with my agent, when I talk with my agent, that was the best probably thing could happen to me in my career to end up with Damian Lillard and CJ there with two guards that you can't go under, man. That thing is just save everything. Like when you have a guy who, who can who can be dangerous for anywhere on the floor and they need to guard three people one guy so i think that's what we was looking to get like to get more freedom so i can you know pass and involve people and and i think no one and i'm pretty sure no one even in portland know what they get at that point of time they know i can hoop you know they saw i still was playing some but they didn't know who i am as, as a person there was a lot of rumors and then what was going on and stuff and in all fake <laughs> like players know like uh, I, I didn't see any player come out saying you did this and did that mm-hmm. and I was cool with the players but at the same time I told them straight up and then and they I decided to ask for trade like I'm leaving like, mm-hmm. this is just best for me I'm, I'm you know I have a experience with the with the organization that the, I didn't like it and I'm just gonna go find somewhere else mm-hmm. and I did so when I came to the Portland um, I think I was playing Hawks uh, that day, uh, and I was like, 
I came there, I think I land like 11 a.m. And game was, I think, late game, TNT game was like 8.30 or 8, some 8 p.m. So I'm walking in. It, whole day was just medical, brought, you know, processing all the medical stuff. You're going to the check there. So I finished, I think, 7.30. So I walk in the film room, Dame, Dame sitting there. <laughs> and... And I'm like, damn, this is Damian Lillard right now. Because I never <laughs> played with a star before. Like, um, it, it was young, you know, every, in Denver was all the young people, and yeah, young yeah. guys who try to become star and who try to, to get there where, where Damian is already there. And he's like, you know, at that point, everybody was already calling me Nurk. Like, Nurk, where you stay? And I'm like, here is like, Here's my number. If you need anything, let me know and stuff like that. So that was cool. And then CJ later. So for me to, for him to take me under the, his wing was it was a special moment for me. Like it's it's really special to, to have somebody like that to to show you the right way because mm-hmm. I never have a right way as far as basketball standpoint. Like this is what you need to do and how you're supposed to do this. And on the floor, coach can teach you a lot, but when somebody is really on the floor with you to show you that this is wrong and this is how you're supposed to do. And I think that's, that's probably why I have so much success in Portland because here, as much as, as I wanted to succeed there, I mean, to get what, what I want with that chance, mm-hmm. I think he understand at the same time how much I can help that team. So he was really, be on my side all the time no matter what is what is uh what is going on he always tell me the truth so that's i think most of the people need that in life but uh, for me it was really helpful like to have somebody to say stop bullshitting or stop doing this like mm-hmm. <laughs> because be real usually with you, you have yeah. something and you try to find an excuse and he's like there's no excuses here like that's mm-hmm. that's number one so whatever happened we're gonna deal with that but he was really with me and, and I think you can really feel that feel that chemistry uh, that you guys have, uh, not only you and Dame, but the entire team, because not all teams uh, have that. And uh, I, I, I just, especially for example, when looking at, at the Clippers and what what they, um, you know, what the, the, the issues that they had uh, this year. But I think with you guys, you are really in a good position with Dame as a leader, with CJ as well, uh, you. And, and just the chemistry that you guys have, like brothers, brothers in arms. For real, for real, man. Like he's one of my best friends, you know, in the whole world. Like when you're looking that way, and and especially when I'm in this part of the, <laughs> this part of the world, I like to call him in the morning, like 3 a.m. just to wake him up. <laughs> he'd be like, he'd be like, no, what are you doing? Man? He's like, Stop calling me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So sometimes be like that. I just mess with him, and he call me back, like. He said, uh, I called him yesterday and, you know, in USA, still people have all the mask and and, yeah. and it's, there is restriction more. And I, sh- and I turn on camera, flip the camera around. He'd be like, where you at? <laughs> it's like, why people have no mask there? Why people did this? I'm like, there's no sign that Corona exists here. Yeah. He'd be like, oh, all right. But that's that's how it is. Like it just um, to have somebody like that in your life is just special. That's that's really cool. Um, and I don't want to talk a lot about the injury, but that was a freaky injury, man. The the tibia and the fibula at the same time. Was it hard to recover? Uh, and what was your mindset coming into the game? Were you one hundred percent? mentally in the game like especially when going into contact like when you when you you know when you back down somebody and are you 100 percent like physical with it or you're still thinking about that um at the back of your mind but i think i showed that that i have no not no doubt i think i showed the the way i was playing mm-hmm. um, i i know it the the day that happened i know i'm gonna be fine Mm-hmm. Because I've been I've been through something like that before when I was you know way younger, like 2011. I had a similar injury, mm-hmm. uh, and a lot of people don't know that. But um, at the same time, I know it's gonna be hard because as as ugly as look, it was nothing damaged. You can't fix it. 
So the bone going to heal and I'm going to be fine. But at the same time, I know I can't do stupid thing and come back before and I should because I'm still heavier and bigger than all other guys have the same injury before. So for me, it was like mentally, like how I can be at the top of the things to not come before. And it was hard. I ain't going to say gonna too hard or this, but it was hard. But it's nothing like people struggling out there in the streets. Like people have, especially with COVID and, and, uh, and the fires in the United States. There is a lot of worse things that happen than just my injury. So I look at it at least that way. So for me, it was like, I'm going to be fine. I just need to take my time. And, and, and I think the fans understand that. So I never hear from, uh, especially from the fan base uh, in Portland, anything wrong or, or why you're not playing yet because they know I was not ready. And they, especially with the history of the, of the injuries in Portland, um, they understand what's going on. So that was, that was a great uh, to not have a pressure to come back. Mm-hmm. You know, even you feel some days you can play, but next day you'd be like, oh, hell no, you, you're not ready yet. But at the same time, you want to play as a competitor, you want to be out there, especially when your team's struggling, losing, and, and you know you're going to be that different makers for them. So for me, I think the most part when I decide to play in the March, I think 15 or something like that, against Houston home when it was uh, uh, COVID hit up and, and Gobert got positive and everything shut down. Mm-hmm. Um, that was, I think, the, the, the really changing point for me because I got two extra months or almost mm-hmm. three extra months. Uh, to get stronger. The, yeah. I don't know about stronger, but just to get um, more time to kind of mentally figure out. Like, I was ready physically in that, but I think mentally the extra three months, excuse me, helped me to kind of get even higher on a, on a, on how much sure I was. I was, mm-hmm. was ready. So, but even on March 15, I was ready. Like, I was, I was healthy. Mm-hmm. Um, but three months later, you know, the bubble and have a mini camp, like, you know, there's no price on that. Like, you can't you can have a mini camp in the middle of the season. Like, mm-hmm. you got to figure out during the game and, and a minute restriction. So, to be able, after 16 months working out, to play with no minute restrictions, I think that's the greatest thing all the time, man. Like, that's great. <laughs> yeah, I, I told Coach, like, I ain't have minute restrictions. And he has doctors behind me, and they said, <laughs> like, he's right. Like, so for me, it was like, that was like game changer, like, to, to able to play all the minutes from once and, um, to feel great, you know, mm-hmm. you know, be played all the late game, especially in the playoffs. <laughs> we have all the late games, like Lakers. We have a Lakers time there, like 9 p.m. Mm-hmm. In, in the East. So we finish game like 12. 1 a.m., me, Dan, CJ, and, and, and the rest of the guys in the cold tubs, man, like 1 in the morning. <laughs> oh, wow, that's crazy, <laughs> man. And ice. So that's how pretty much working out. But um, the injury itself, it was not crazy hard. Mm-hmm. But it was just mentally, you know, challenged to not come before. That's the only, I think, take away from the injury. But mm-hmm. I'm glad everything finished, you know, everything was fixed the way it should be fixed. And, and really, I don't feel anything. So mm-hmm. that's great. Uh, that's really, that's really great to hear. And you showed it, you, you know, you, you came back as a beast, averaging, you know, double, double, nearly, nearly 20. I think it was 18 and 10 uh, in the games, uh, you know, when you came back. Uh, okay, Yusuf, um, we like to finish off all of our interviews with a few quick fire questions. So just really short questions and really short answers. Um, best teammate you ever played with? Um, I have a couple of them, but I got to go with Dane. Damien Lillard. Most underrated player in the league? Oof. Damn. <laughs> A tough one. There is some guys really, you know, Drew Holiday was, but I think he's still he's still underrated. A couple of guys uh, said the same uh, the same answer. The same, you know, they mentioned Drew. But I, I really think he's right now. Like people know who Drew Holiday is. But mm-hmm. Like two years ago, he was really underrated. But mm-hmm. right now, I think we understand <laughs> what comes with that. But definitely. Uh, one of the people who 
you know, if you can if you can say who was, I think Drew Holiday. You know, no one's gonna be mad at that. Mm-hmm. Uh, toughest matchup, your nemesis. Whew. I think um, toughest matchup. So for me, in those what six years now, <laughs> uh, I would go with the Boogie Cousins. Mm-hmm. I think Boogie and his, you know, prime before the injury. He's not about strong. People ask me who is the strongest guy in the league. I don't feel that way. But I, when big guy can handle the ball like he does, and mm-hmm. he's a big dude, pretty, pretty big dude too. Mm-hmm. And when big guy he put the floor, put the ball on the floor and handle like that, there is really small amounts you can do, especially with the with the referee these days, and they have a little problems, with a little problem with the with the officiating, just the bigs in general. Mm-hmm. But uh, because there is, you know, game getting away from the for the post and everything. But especially when you have somebody like Boogie in the play, the way he was playing before injury, just insane. I think yeah, he was a, he was a beast. Um, the best shooter ever. Ever, damn man, you're going hard with this. <laughs> just a couple of more, man. <laughs> Not about ever, but uh, you know, in the league right now, top, okay. In the league right now, um, man, yeah, Dame is in the fire, man. But if I need to go with somebody else, I would go with Steph Curry. Yeah, can't miss with Steph, man. Right. Um, exactly. Best international player of all time. <laughs> <laughs> You got at me, man. That that's gonna be tough. Um, I think as far as right now, I, I would go with Dirk. Dirk mm-hmm. But uh, but the is, you know, you can argue. You can argue. There is probably a couple more guys who can who can go with. But um, personally, I would go with Dirk. Uh, favorite NBA team growing up? Uh, like I said, I start late. To play basketball, I didn't have any team, so mm-hmm. it's really for me hard to say favor growing up. But when I I was following the Lakers because of Kobe Bryant was my um, idol, mm-hmm. uh, that's probably the Lakers. But uh, you know, I started playing basketball 2014. I was mm-hmm. not really into basketball before, so that's crazy, man. What you did in six years, uh... <laughs> right? Yeah. Um, Olympic gold or NBA ring? If I can choose today, Olympic with the Bosnia or NBA ring, there is no doubt I would go Olympic with Bosnia mm-hmm. national team. So, mm-hmm. you know, we're going a long way to, to get there, but you know, hopefully, hopefully we can we can fix it and, and get the right way. But um, I definitely pick it, the Olympic with the with the Bosnian national team. Uh, all right, Nurk, thank you so much for your time. It's been a pleasure. I uh, wish you all the Appreciate best in the, in the upcoming season. And yeah, thanks, man. Thank you. Take care. Bye-bye.